Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. Not because it's an amazing role-playing game. Not because we're going to escape into the realm of fantasy. No, we're going to talk about it because nothing else is grinding my gears more than seeing article after article after article in the mainstream media about how D&D is inherently racist. Growing up, I loved fantasy but I never saw myself as the hero because I didn't think it was possible for someone who looked like me, who acted like me, who was like me to be that hero. That was a clip from the D&D 1 trailer that came out from Wizards of the Coast, their new version of D&D that's supposed to be all-inclusive, all-diverse, all this crap that they keep feeding us time and time and time again. This agenda that they keep pushing in mainstream media at this point, where articles continuously be written about how D&D is one of the most racist things you can do on the planet. Meanwhile, we're, I, you know, I'm watching an actual uh, publisher come out with uh, something that is completely racist in itself because they're drawing on the tenets of the WW bad guys. It's absolutely ridiculous. That's not the debate here. The topic here today is how these articles continue to rail on D&D, on a fantasy game. They keep putting people's words in their mouths. They take old quotes from Gary Gygax and go, oh, this is what he meant. That's not what he meant. He built a program of numbers and a put it on a piece of paper for us to read and gave us the tools necessary to conquer the racism, to conquer the slavery we see in these games. But that doesn't mean the storytelling needs to be bad. A good pro protagonist will help push along a story. It gives you a sense of coming forward. It gives you a sense of being the hero. It gives you a path forward in your fantasy games. And if we're going to continue to rail against this type of thing and just ruin the game, in my eyes, have these mainstream media jocks sit there and try and tell us geeks that we're not allowed to play this game the way we want to, then what do we have left? We have something that is completely indicative of real life. And I can tell you right now, when you're living through real life, things are not the same. They're not a fantasy realm. They are not where... People see each other as the color of their skin. For Christ's sakes, this is an absolute travesty to continue to see this narrative out of, the main, out of mainstream articles. It's absolutely ridiculous at this point. I have something here that I found. This is an actual cited article. It looks like it's been reviewed by a ton of peers. So, are orcs racist? Dungeons and Dragons, ethnocentrism, anxiety, and the depiction of evil monsters. Abstract. Uh, recent years have seen debate about whether depictions of inherently evil monsters, races such as orcs in role-playing games or literature, movies such as Lord of the Rings, could be considered racist. Although such dis decisions may be subjective, little data has been produced to inform the debate regarding how critical an issue this is. In particular, does consuming such material relate to racism in the real world? Or do the majority of individuals, particularly people of color, considering such depictions racist? The current study sought to address these issues in a sample of 308 adults, so 38.2% were non-white, a subset of who 17% were players of role-playing games Dungeons & Dragons. Playing Dungeons & Dragons D&D was not associated with the greater ethnocentrism, one faucet of racism attitudes. Only 10.2% found a depiction of orc monsters as inherently evil to be offensive. So 10%, that's 30 people, only 10.2 found the depiction of orc monsters as inherently evil to be offensive. However, when later asked the blend, blunder 
question of whether the same depiction was racist, the number jumped to 34%, with women particularly inclined to endorse this position. This suggests asking people about racism may prime them to see racism in material they hadn't previously found to be offensive. D&D and Magic the Gathering in particular out of Wizards of the Coast, these things have become really mainstream. And we've seen this in the past. We're seeing this as a culture shift continues to happen in our DNAs with the wokeism and the diversity inclusion. Why I play D&D? Because I like the art. I like escaping reality. And I like to forget about everyday woes. I don't play D&D to enslave people. I don't play D&D to think of the color of people's skin. I play it because it's fun. Not because I, people see things as racist. This is an absolute ridiculous stereotype that has been pushed down on geeks today. Why D&D is one of the most racist things in the world for you guys to play. Why the wokeism that has been introduced into the game is going to change it and it's going to save racism if you're racist quit it don't be it it's not that hard if you want to see everything if you want to continue to see racism in everything you do today that's on you you can live with that Jeez, the critical one well you rolled a critical one when you wrote this article on August 18th, Dungeons Dragons publisher Wizards of the Coast released Unearth Arcana Character Origins, a new updated rule set for their currently called One D and D. You know the One D and D where it's like the One Ring, where you can't see yourself in the game unless Wizards of the Coast puts a play um, puts it in the rules that you can see yourself in the game. Remember, Wizards of the Coast is the ones controlling the narrative of your story. In June 2022, the issues they've got issues issued a statement about their commitment to diversity in Dungeons and Dragons. They don't even need to put that out there. The diversity has always been in the game. If you're not, if you have to go out there and try and find the diversity, then what are you doing? You to push this diversity quota like it's a tokenism of things. That it, it's not that, and that in itself is the problem with why pushing this narrative is creating more of these issues. Why it's creating a influx and an infighting of it non-stop. You know what? You want to play D D. Go out and get a miniature and fight it amongst yourselves and then maybe write an article after you throw it at the damn dartboard for the day. Identify commonly cited pressure points and said throughout the 50 year history of D&D, some of the peoples in the game, orcs and drow being two of the prime examples, have been characterized as monstrous and evil using descriptions that are painfully reminiscent of how real world ethnic groups have been a and continue to be denigrated the drow in particular they live in a sub a subterranean um area they worship a evil god called Loth. they were the they they weren't always evil they don't always have to be evil and that is something that a dm and a good storyteller will change it was from an evil realm and that is part of the narrative of the game and why the drow were seen as evil throughout the realms because most drow actually went into that direction because they were born underground they were sub they were removed from the societal means of a fantasy world where there was more tribalism between the nations in fantasy you cannot take that idea of a medieval fantasy realm and encapsulate where we are today in a modern society where everyone talks to each other normally when you take a group of people and you put them in a box and you leave them in that box schrodinger will tell you if they're either good or bad we won't know until we open that box that's what D, D is experiment where a cat is placed in a box with a sealed vial of poison that will break open at a random time now since no one knows when or if the poison has been released until the box is opened the cat can be thought of as both alive 
and dead. You live in a medieval society. You don't live in today's society where everyone speaks to each other and everyone has moved forward and moved away from these tropes. And that's why you see the difference there. And at the same time, you see storytelling. It creates a story for something people will go against. Ritz was born out of that story and lifted it upside down. And it's a, an amazing story. They continue to write these things. They're trying to change the past, but they can't do it. You can't change the past. That's where we came from. And this is why I am sick and tired of seeing these narratives. We can throw the agreements out the window at this point. If you don't agree with me, that's fine. You know what? I can accept that. There is a level of understanding though. Dungeons and Dragons takes place in a past realm of fantasy. Yes, you can put today's stereotypes and modernization on the system. However, that does not create the fantasy realm that we want to escape. If you put today's modern age spin on it, then you don't escape anything. You're just playing today's age. I believe it was the Strixhaven module that came out, the Strixhaven adventure, where you could sit there and play a barista. You want to play someone that goes to a community college that makes coffee in a fantasy game. Go right ahead. If that's what your take is to play D&D, if that's your introduction to D&D, I'm sorry. You maybe want to jump out of the hoops a little bit. There is just so many times that I read these articles and I just read them and I shake my head because they, they're they false. The idea that we have to rewrite these stories to to modernize them, to, to create a new version of the story, you're changing the history, you're changing the way it was written and you're, you're honestly doing a disservice to the author of those stories of the past. With Tolkien, there's a lot of hatred going around saying he made the orcs as evil beings. He made the orcs as a, a version of what he saw in a world war. He lost his friends to, to the bad guys. He lost them on the battlefield. And the orcs were one way of him telling us that the bad guys were on the battlefield. He didn't put that to a race. He put that to the people that were trying to take away our freedom. And now those same type of people that are trying to take away our freedom of thinking are trying to turn around and call these things racist. Thank you for watching. I'm your proud Canadian Phoenix, Cinder Shadow. Have yourselves a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe.